The Huskies of uh, Matawan High School traveled to Somerset County last week. Coach Joe Martucci's club was plagued by turnovers. They're going to try to get a little Matawan pride working today, Jim, and turn it all around. Yeah, talking about pride, they had a tough loss last week to Bridgewater, but they got to stay focused, and this is the one that counts. This is for the uh, first place in the B North Division. However, they have an outstanding rusher in Charlie Rogers, almost 1,000 yards in four games. Hey, let's see what he can do today. First place in the B North Division is at stake for the Scarlet Flyers and the Huskies, who will battle when we come back. The pizza was absolutely delicious. Pete and Elders, my mother never made lasagna this good. Mm. Number one, great pizza. It's the best in the world. Eat an extra, extra large pizza by yourself. Get a free Pete and Elders t-shirt. Carmen's Thing Crust. At Pete and Elders, we take care of you. Mm. Now I raised 500. Hey, where's everybody going? They've gone to Jason's Furniture in Ocean Township, where you can select from over 100 rooms of furniture on display priced well below regular retail. So come to Jason's in Ocean Township, where you can buy today and have it in your home tonight. For the best furniture deals in town, go to Jason's. Your special occasion deserves a special gown from Marissa's Bridal in Howell. For bridal gowns, bridesmaid dresses, prom dresses, and evening wear, with names like Waters and Waters, Zor for Joel, and Demetrius. We also carry the finest in bridal headpieces and shoes, and tuxedo rental is also available. Purchase your gown at Marissa's, and all your bridesmaid dresses will be discounted by 10%. Also purchase your gown and headpiece on the same day, and receive 20% off your headpiece. Marissa's Bridal on Route 9 in the Howell Center. Huskyville, USA is what they call the home of the Manawan Regional High School Huskies. Great football tradition here at the home of the Huskies as they get ready to take on the Neptune Scarlet Flyers on a beautiful fall afternoon. Temperatures in the 60s, the sun is out, and Joe Martucci's gang is ready to play for first place in the short conference B North Division today against the undefeated Neptune Scarlet Flyers. And Jim, we talked a little bit in the open, the fact that uh, Madawan coming off the loss last week to Bridgewater Raritan High School. It, you know, they've got to put it behind them and focus on today's game because this is the one that counts in the league standings. The other game was a, a non-league game, a good chance to measure yourself against a tough opponent. But this one is in, in the local area against the tough team led by John Amabile. And for the Huskies, they really have got to put that behind them. Yeah, got to stay focused. Okay, fellas, my name is Mr. McConnell, and it's a pleasure for me to be assigned to officiate this game today. I am Mr. Nixon, our umpire. Mr. Tim Kinney is the headlinesman, and Jim Feligno is the field judge. During this game, fellas, I'm going to call this team red, and I'm going to call this team white. If there's an infraction where I want to speak to a captain, I want you to step forward and listen to everything I have to say. If you have a question, ask me the question at that time, because once you make a decision, it's a final decision. Okay, for red, I have Kevin, number 34, is speaking, and Spentley, number 10, is going to speak for white. This is the coin we're going to use, fellas. That's a head, and that's a tail. Spentley, I want you to call it while it's in the air. If I drop it, we pick it up and do it again. Okay? Tail. He called a tail. It is a head. Kevin, you have one at the cost. You can choose at this time to defer to the second half. You can receive the ball, kick off, or defend a goal. What is the question? They want to defer? Defer. Red has won the toss. They choose to defer. All right, Spentley, you now can choose to receive the ball, kick off, or defend a goal. They want the ball. What goal would you like to defend, son? Put your backs over here, please. Put your backs over here. Red has won the toss. They choose to defer. White will receive this way. This way. All right, fellas, step right in here for a second. One more thing. During this team, I want this, you guys have been assigned as captains for your team. I want you to control your team at all times. Players dressed in red or maroon only speak to players dressed in red or maroon. Players dressed in white speak only to those players who are here to play football. Good luck to both teams. A little strategy right off the bat, Jim. The Huskies 
won the toss. And Joe Martucci's instructions to Captain Kevin Roberts were to defer to the second half. So a little, little bit of strategy there. Yeah, battle of wits. Jack McConnell was the, or is the referee today, and his crew. And you heard Jack McConnell's instructions to the teams. We're here to play football. Talk to guys on your own team. No trash talking. Plenty of business right out on the field <laughs> to keep your minds on the game. So uh, no, no indecision by Neptune. They wanted the football. And Neptune will get the ball first. Greg Kapalko is with us today. He's down on the sidelines, and let's hear what Greg has for us. Although they're going to have the football first, one of the key questions for the ball game is, how's Neptune going to compensate for the loss of Sean Clark, middle linebacker? Neptune believes they could, they could replace him in the offensive backfield with their high-powered offense, but on defense, it could be a key question. We ought to find out that early, the first time Matawan has the football. And that is a very good point from Greg Capalco. Sean Clark, an outstanding two-way player for the Neptune Scarlet Flyers, was injured a week ago and is not playing today. Greg Laughlin, number one, the deepest of three backs for Neptune, and Jeff Moore, number three, kicks it off. He squibs it. It's picked up by one of the up men, and Neptune will have good position at its own 41-yard line as we begin this ball game. Going to be a lot of hitting out there. These teams, both teams need the win, as we said. First place in the B North. Jason Ingram, number 30, was the Scarlet Flyer who returned that kick. The quarterback is number six, Justin Sella. He is a junior. Last week in the win over Long Branch, 7 of 11 with one interception for 82 yards and two touchdowns for Justin Sella. First play from scrimmage, and Sella wants a throw. Flares it out over the head of Monty Hailman. Close to a lateral. In fact, it was. And the referees will mark it, I believe, at the 35-yard line. So that will go as a loss of six and bring up second and 16. Uro heads up play by Hailman. Knows he's got to get the ball out of bounds. Got to watch it again. Watch Sella. Real relaxed motion. First play from scrimmage. Just over his head. But Hammond knows it's a lateral. Neptune came right to the line on second down, and then quarterback Justin Sella called a timeout. So that gives us a chance to set the Neptune offense. John Amabile, the head coach of the Scarlet Flyers, has Laughlin and Hailman in the backfield with Neil Smith and Gamble, the big tight end. Pierce and Carlson, two players we've seen for a good couple of years. Weddle, Manley, and Clark up front. So right off the bat, the little flare pass doesn't work, and the Huskies come up with a six-yard loss, and it is a Madawan defense led up front by Monroe, Bernstein, Perry, and Rose. Hill, Schifano, and Roberts. Shafano, one of the outstanding linebackers in the short conference. Sterling, Baker, Zabrowski, and Williams. Good speed and ability in the secondary. This is number 34, Dennis Hubbard, with a good game before he's pulled down by number two, Marty Williams. Hubbard gained 11 yards. It'll bring up third and five. Hubbard right up the gut. Taking over for Clark, a fullback. Take a look at that Matawan D. Neptune comes in with the number one ranked offense in the Shore Conference in terms of yardage per game, 343 yards for the Scarlet Flyers. On third down, Laughlin can't find any room around the corner. Making the stop was number 34, senior linebacker Kevin Roberts. And the Matawan defense is held on Neptune's first possession of the afternoon. Taking a look at Laughlin. Not very tall, 5'6", but real big legs, strong legs. That time he could not turn the corner on Roberts, however. And number three, Jumar Hoffman will come on to punt for the Scarlet Flyers. Rogers one and Sterling four back deep for the Huskies. Two great rivals now in the same division of the short conference, the B North Division. Hoffman's punt picked up by Rogers at the 15. Trapped near the sidelines and finally knocked out of bounds by number 65, Darnell Manley. And Matawan will have the ball for the first time. 
Get a good look at Charlie Rogers, number one. Leading rusher in the shore. Explosive speed. Coming into the game, Rogers has rushed for 849 yards. Darnell Roke, number five, is the quarterback. As the Huskies begin their first drive at the 19. Tight end is Dave Monroe. He resets on the left side. Here is Charlie Rogers, stood up and knocked back for a loss of four. Carlson, 72, was there for the Scarlet Flyers. Roke, the 5'11", 180-pound junior, may have been checking off at the line of scrimmage. They mark it as a loss of one, so it's second and 11 for the Huskies from the 18. This one is just underway, but we expect a good one at Matawan Regional High School. And here's Charlie Rogers. Rogers knocked down by number four, Malik Williams. Here is the Matawan offense. Rogers and Roberts in the backfield. Sterling, Colleton, and Monroe, the receivers. Salvatore, Cooper, Rafalowicz, Ferguson, and McCord up front. It'll be third and nine at the 20. Nobody's on the team. Rogers breaking for the outside, but he will not get there. Number 32, Monty Hailman, the junior linebacker, was there to make the play, and he's a he's a comer as a junior. Jimmy played last year as a sophomore, and, and Hellman, with that year of experience, makes a nice play on Rogers. Yeah, makes a nice read. Take a look at it. He has nice speed. Runs Rogers down. Just a little help. That's 20 Smith piling on. Gamble, Clark, Pierce, and Carlson up front as we get set for a Matawan punt. Moore or check it. Roberts gets it away. It's taken at the 45 to the 40. And Spentley Stop. Turan sets Robert Neptune Spence up in good field Turan. position. Here's a look at the rest of that Neptune defense. Hailman, Hubbard, Hoffman, and Turan, the linebackers. Neal, Williams, and Smith, the deep backs. But now it'll be the Neptune offense back on the field and in good position at the Matawan 40-yard line. Eight minutes, 10 seconds left in the first quarter. No score. Justin Sella, the quarterback, this is Monty Hailman, and Hailman is driven down by Marty Williams, the free safety. How about Williams, number two? He fought off the block of 52 Clark from Neptune, made the tackle. You see the replay again. Watch Williams fight off the block. Make a nice stop. Loss of four, second and 14. Scarlet Flyers try to go right up the middle, but not much there. A gain of perhaps two yards. That looked like Hubbard, 34. Yeah, straight down to the fullback. No mark. It looks like the intensity right now. Both teams a little sluggish out there. The offenses aren't getting on track. A little wake-up call. Yeah, maybe some nerves. It is a big game. Neptune at 4-0, Matawan at 3-1. A little shaky as the team's traded punts on the first two possessions, but now Sella looks downfield and completes the pass for a first down at the 28-yard line to number 20, Frank Smith. Yeah, Smith went downstairs to get that ball. Nice catch. Brought it off the turf. Watch it. Sella real relaxed. He's got great height, 6-4 really see the field. Here's Hubbard. And Hubbard is knocked down after a very short gain. Looks like Neptune's trying to use a little ball control. Switch it up with the pass. We'll call it second and ten. From the 28. This is Laughlin, and he's pulled down. Mike Schifano, 22, 
was there for the Huskies. Yeah, Mark, and as you mentioned, Chifano, the key to that defense, an outstanding linebacker, Get a couple calls from some major colleges, very interested in him. There he is, 6'1", 210, good size for a linebacker. Charlie Rogers now in the game for the Huskies in the secondary on third and long. Sella looking downfield. It's broken up on a nice play by number four, Araz Sterling, as the pass was intended for number 20, number 22, and that is Mike Neal, the intended receiver. Sterling, number four, was there to make the nice play for the Huskies. Now Sterling will look back for the ball. There he is. Been up. Took it away. Watch the replay. If Sella leads Neal, he has a he has six points. Has the protection. Sterling goes up, makes a nice play at quarterback. I'm not sure Sterling got his hand on the ball, but just the yeah. fact that he jumped may have broken Mike Neal's concentration just a bit, and the ball hit off of Neal's hands. What he did when he made the first down. All right, we got to think about that. All right, if 32 goes into the slot, you can think reverse coming back this way. All right, all right, 32 at the, at the uh, wing set, think reverse. All right, you got to stay outside on the back side. Let me know if he's there. If he's there, we got to know about it. Right, let's go with Jamil on a spare. Okay. Joe Martucci talking to his defense across the way. John Amabile with instructions for the Neptune offense. It's going to be fourth down coming up. And from the looks of things, the Scarlet Flyers are going to go on fourth and nine at the Matawan 27. And why not? You never know how many chances you're going to get against the Huskies. You've got the ball at the 27. Take your shot. Yeah, definitely take the shot. You heard Coach Martucci watching the reverse. Now that's Hailman in motion. No reverse here. Sella feels the heat, gets rid of it. It's in and out of the hands of Rodgers, incomplete. Rodgers and Baker were there for the Huskies as the pass was intended for Mike Neal. <laughs> Rodgers and Baker played a little tip drill between themselves. Almost had the interception. Watch it again. Sella has time but gets rushed. Again, good height. You can see the field. Going long over the six. See 20 Smith ball down. So, got a one ball. First and 10 for the Huskies at the 27. 529 left in the first quarter, no score. Rogers driven down. Nice play from number 30, Jason Ingram. And you gotta know that that number one defense for Neptune is just gonna key a number one for Matawan, Charlie Rogers. Second down, eight. Huskies at their own 29. Darnell Rope with the quarterback. This is number two, Marty Williams, with his first carry. Short gain. Yeah, see Big Lou Carlson, number 72 for Neptune. 6'2", 278. A lot of mass in the middle of that line. Third and six will be the call for the Huskies from the 31. Madawan still looking for its first first down. The toss to Rogers. Rogers driven back and stopped short of the first down. 89 Gamble and 10 Turan making the stop on the 5'10, 170 pound senior. And now I understand why the Neptune defense is ranked number one at the shore. Yeah, you can see the intensity, the pitch out to Rodgers. He's going for the first down, watch these hits coming. Gamble, Lucy number 10, that's Turan, turning him back. So Roberts punts the ball away. The ball was dropped and recovered by Turan, and the Scarlet Flyers will have it at their own 35. Number 1 0 for Neptune back out on the field. At their own 35 yard line. Pump up that offense. Both defensive fronts are having a good game, though, right now, keeping the rush to a minimum. 
First and 10 for the Scarlet Flyers at their own 35 yard line. Two possessions for Neptune thus far have resulted in a punt and a failed fourth down play at the Huskies 27. Seller to throw on first down, completes it to Hubbard, a gain of eight. And he's knocked down by number two, Marty Williams. Williams is playing a strong game already, although that was a nice reception by Hubbard out of the backfield for game, well, let's call it seven instead of second and three. Yeah, Hubbard takes a nice shot from Williams. But he is wide open, as you said, Mark. Neptune not wasting a lot of time. Laughlin trying to wiggle his way forward near the first down marker. He may be about a yard shy. It's going to be third down. Trying to go over that right side, over 52 Clark and 75 Weddle. Neptune has Take a look at that O. Short yard. Ball is resting this is where they miss Clark. Yard. Clark, a big bruising fullback, is missing this game with an injury, but they pick up the first down with Monty Hailman as he crosses midfield. A gain of seven, and the Scarlet Flyers have their second first down of the afternoon. How about Hailman? Answer the call. Good haul up front, but kept those legs moving. First down, move the chains. First down, tough. Neptune's right up on the ball again. First and 10 at the Matawan 48. Here's Greg Laughlin, and Laughlin didn't have much running room. Looked like number six, Shannon Baker, was at the bottom of the pile for the Huskies. See that Neptune offense is really trying to switch it up, get up to the line fast, then they'll come back, go into the huddle. There's Baker, number six, good tackler. Smith and Neal split to the near side. That's the way Sella is looking, looking. And it's nearly picked off by Shannon Baker. Frank Smith was the closest Neptune player to it, but Baker should have had that one, Jim. It was right in his hand. Yeah, uh, that's almost number two for Baker. And as you said, right in his hand. I guess he was real surprised that it came that easy. Forget the gloves. <laughs> yeah, take off those gloves. I'll just use my bare hands. Catch it. Ooh. Like to have that one back. Third down. Flared out to the sidelines for Hoffman. The ball popped loose and it was recovered by Monty Hailman, number 32 for the Scarlet Flyers. Well, the ball is bouncing Neptune's way. They got a lucky break on that one. That's a real dangerous play, that flare pass. There was a flag down though. Madawan players were looking over to the bench for instructions on what to do with the penalty, and we're looking for the signal. And the flag is going to be picked up, so it will be fourth down. It was a short gain on that pass and then fumble, and the Scarlet Flyers were facing fourth and five at the Madawan 43. And let's see what John Amabile decides to do. Just a perfect afternoon for high school football. Great crowd on hand. Between the 4-0 Scarlet Flyers and 3-1 Huskies. And Matawan has called timeout. Jamar Hoffman, number three, was back in punt formation. But Joe Martucci, the Matawan coach, called the timeout and wants a chance to talk things over. No score in the ball game. One minute, 35 seconds left in the first quarter. You got anything coming back? Okay. All right, Raz out. Raz out. All right, safety punt. Where? Feet on a 10. Feet on a 10, all right? I'm out. Okay, you're out. Safety punt. I want him deep. Wait a minute. Back, what? Oh, Coach, they're lined up in a punt formation. All right? Yeah, I'm back in the clock, right? I still got to think of Charlie was in for Charlie's in. What? Charlie's in for Charlie. All right, all right. Quiet, relax now. Relax, relax. Automatic ravioli. Put Z in. Oh, right, right, right. Put Z in to rush one. All right, put Z in. You're out, Raz. All right, safety punt. Let's go. Watch the Automatic face ravioli. Hey, face drill, man. Two. Two, you're the face drill. Jim, you played football. What, what could automatic ravioli be? <laughs> You're asking me a question I just don't have an answer to, Mark. I love that. <laughs> Joe Martucci has had great success here at Matawan. Maybe because of the automatic ravioli, who knows? I'll tell you, with Rogers back there, who cares what it's called? Just give him the ball. Rogers is at the 10. Hoffman 
It's the low snap, but kicks it. Not a good punt, although it takes a Neptune bounce and will roll dead at the 15. Well, that one will look good tomorrow in the papers. But Neptune's really getting the bounces. They got the fumble recovery, and now they're lucky on the punt. Net of about 30 yards, but it does pin the Huskies at their own 15, and that's where Madawan will begin its third drive. Lousy field position so far for Madawan. Drives that started at the 19, the 27, and the 15. Madawan has run only six offensive plays and two punts here in the first quarter. Clock running with 105 left in the first quarter. No score. Darnell Roke, number five, is the quarterback. Charlie Rogers wrapped up and driven back. First there was number 86, Herb Smith. Yeah, Smith's a big kid, 6'2", 182 pounds. There you see it. Coming off that left side of the defense. Take a look at Rogers. Can get the handoff, but just nowhere to go. A lot of white jerseys. Team tackling. Hoffman and Carlson came in at the end. Smith stood him up first. Second and 10 at the 15. 25 seconds left in the quarter. Roke's first pass is batted down by Herb Smith, who makes the nice call himself. Two great plays in a row by the senior defensive end. Yeah, real athletic. Gets up in the air, knocks the ball down. Nasty man on the back of the helmet. Doing the job on defense. See Roke drop back. Not just an outstanding effort by Smith. Third and 10, 15 seconds left in the quarter. Tough battle so far, a battle of field position. Roke, play fake, throws, long, incomplete. Number seven, Ed Colleton, and number eight, Rashawn Marshall, were both there for the Huskies, but the pass was thrown too long and in between the two, and neither Colleton or Marshall could get it. Yeah, watch the ISO. Both of these receivers are going to go long, beat the secondary, but Roke just overthrows. We're taking a look at Colton, number seven. He now, was open. Now the Scarlet Flyers should come out of it with good field position. Roberts in punt formation gets into it at the 11. Laughlin at the 45, to the 40, the 35, through a seam. Laughlin still on his feet. And a terrific effort by Laughlin, who will not be stopped. Touchdown, Neptune. Greg Laughlin. Oh, how about that effort? to put the Scarlet Flyers up 6 nothing. Uh, he's only 5'6", but he's 190 pounds. Take a look at those legs. Outstanding run. It's all power in that body. A punt return of about 45 yards for Greg Laughlin to put the Scarlet Flyers up on the final play of the first quarter. But Jamar Hoffman, number three, will have a chance to attempt the extra point. Duran's hold is good, and the kick is too, but there are flags down, so hold everything. Oh, what a run by Laughlin. He was untouched for the first 15 or so yards, and then split the seam and broke through a pile and just kept the legs churning. The penalty on the extra point was against Madawan for too many men on the field, so the kick by Hoffman counts. And at the end of the first quarter, Neptune leads 7-0. Let's watch that run by Laughlin at the end of one.
brakes, dual airbags. Honey, look! This is great! And honey, we can handle the financing. Seriously, how do I look? Cute. Academy Honda is having a super fall clearance sale. All 94 models must go to make room for 95 inventory. At Academy Honda, you'll find super low prices and no down payment for qualified buyers. Did you remember the checkbook? Mm. I told you Academy Honda has the best deals. What would I do without you? Looking at that replay, Jim, as we went to break at the end of the first quarter, I don't know how Greg Laughlin got away from number 34, Kevin Roberts. Roberts had him wrapped up, and what a great effort by Greg Laughlin. So now Rogers and Sterling go back to take the kickoff from number three, Jamar Hoffman, following that touchdown and extra point. They won't give Rogers a chance to bring it back. It's picked up at the 31. And back across the 40 to the 42 comes number 31, Joe Martucci. And so the Huskies will have it first and 10 at their own 42. Another one's really got to get in gear. Their offense has been stymied today by that tough defense from Neptune. It looks like they're not getting to the line. It's not crisp out there. Nine plays in the first quarter for the Huskies and three punts, one of which was returned for a touchdown. Darnell Roke is the quarterback, and he tries to get the Huskies in gear on first down, throws it over the intended receiver, number 81, Dave Monroe. It'll be second and 10. They're going to the tight end. That was a tough pass for Monroe to hang on to. A lot of velocity on it. Take a look at Roke. He's got a cast on that left hand, his non-throwing hand. Got to be hard to handle the football, especially under center. Well, the Scarlet Flyers fans had something to cheer about on that run by Laughlin, and now the Huskies trailing 7 0, face second and 10 at their own 42. Here's Charlie Rogers. Rogers has not broken one yet and doesn't that time. Gamble 89 and Ingram number 30 combined on the stop. And again, every time Charlie Rogers gets the ball, there's at least two or three white jerseys blanketing him on defense. Giving each other high fives over there. 32 Hellman and 30 Ingram, the linebackers. Picking up the slack for Sean Clark, that outstanding linebacker. Third and six coming up after the four-yard gain. This is Williams breaking into the clear and all the way to the Scarlet Flyers 40. That is the first first down for the Matawan Huskies. Well, smart play. Give it to Williams. Fake it to Rodgers. Obviously, you know, you leave the Neptune defense over pursuing because you're so worried about Rodgers. Hey, and Williams, it's a nice play. 13 yards on that run for Marty Williams. And now it's first down. The Scarlet Flyers 41 yard line. Best effort by the Huskies today. Roke scrambling under a rush, flips it complete to number seven, Ed Colleton at the 32 yard line. A gain of perhaps nine yards. Yeah, taking a look at Colleton, came back for the ball, heads up play. Roke's going to have a lot of pressure. Going to roll to his left. Got to throw across his body. See Gamble trying to run him down. Let's take a look at this catch. Ooh, good concentration. Second and one. 32. Here's Rogers. Rogers has the first down and reaches the 26 before he's wrapped up by number 89, Derek Gamble. Huskies have a bit of a drive going. That was the fifth play, and they picked up a couple of first downs. Yeah, you can see Coach Martucci's trying to loosen up that Neptune D. The first quarter, they're tight to the ball. Now they throw a few passes, loosen up those linebackers in the secondary, give Madawan's running game a chance. First and 10 at the Scarlet Flyers, 27, and we've got a couple of flags. Let's see what just happened. 
Somebody moved. Oh, there it is, yeah. Oof. Marking it off against Neptune, but we saw the guard move from Matawan. I mean, I don't know how the refs missed that one, but hey. Hey, Matawan gets a break. First and five after the penalty. Ball is at the 22-yard line. Manawan driving for what could be the tying score. Neptune leads 7-0. The quick flip to Rashawn Marshall. And Marshall takes a hit, may have dropped the ball, and it's loose. And the Huskies get it back. <laughs> How about 32, Hammond? He's the guy who laid that hit. Pass was caught by number eight, Rashawn Marshall. And it will be a first down for the Huskies. And when you come across the middle, expect to be hit. Marshall makes a nice catch. Watch this. Oof. Ball comes loose. Helmet. Watch Helmet come across. <laughs> Lays a helmet right in there. First down at the 14. Rope options to Rogers. Flag is down. So is Rogers at the 15. Hailman and Turan and Neal were there for the Scarlet Flyers. Let's see the call. Holding against the Huskies. So Neptune, I'm sure, will march it back. Take the penalty and make it first and long. Let's see. Yep, that'll be it. Push him back. Possibly make him throw the ball. It'll be first and 20. Nine minutes, 24 seconds left in the second quarter. Neptune leads 7-0 on the 45-yard punt return for a touchdown by Greg Laughlin. Whistles before the play. Huskies think the Scarlet Flyers jump. Penalty against the Scarlet Flyers. Lined up in the neutral zone. No, I think, I think it may have been equipment. Yeah, you're right, Mark. <laughs> Coach Avondale got that Buddy Ryan look going. Over the sidelines, Mr. Intensity. First and 15 after the markoff. Rogers looking for the corner, and he's driven down near the 15 by number 22, sophomore Mike Neal. Rogers gained about five, maybe six, as he got to the 14. Trying to get Rodgers outside, get him going. It's been a tough day so far. Good pursuit by Neptune. Neil got the tackle, but Spentley Turan, number 10, forced Rodgers to take it wide. And now it is second and 10. The ball is back at the original line of scrimmage before all those penalties. The 14-yard line of the Scarlet Flyers. Quick flip from Rope to Marshall. And Marshall reaches the nine, where he's wrapped up by number four, Malik Williams. So a gain of five yards will make it third and five. A good catch by Colleton, or is it Marshall, excuse me. But uh, check out number three. That's a replay. Hoffman just waiting on it. He's going to read that, especially in the second half. It's a quick pass to the flat. Positive yards from Matawan. On third down, the Huskies go with number two, Marty Williams, and he'll be stopped short of the first down. And let's see what the call will be on fourth down now. See place kicker number three, Jeff Moore, coming onto the field. It looks like Moore will set up to attempt the field goal. He'll set the tee at the 15-yard line, and this will be a 25-yard field goal attempt for number three, Jeff Moore. So Moore trying to get the Huskies on the board. 
Roberts is the holder. The 25-yarder is up. And it is no good. It is no good. Moore thought he had it, but he didn't. And the Scarlet Flyers' lead remains at 7-0. Well, Moore thought it wasn't that close. He thought he had three. Still shaking his head. He had a good look at it. I guess the ref had a better one. That's a tough one. He had a nice drive going, and they come away empty-handed. The field goal attempt was the 10th play of the drive which began at the Matawan 42-yard line. And now the Scarlet Flyers take over first and 10 in the 20 with 7.20 left in the second quarter. Laughlin shaking and baking all the way to the 31, a gain of 11 and a first down. Yeah, William brings him down, but take a look at Laughlin. That's real time. Speed hits the hole real quick, gets up field, good run. Laughlin came into this game having rushed for just over 600 yards. Here's Monty Hailman. Hailman breaking free. It's a foot race, and Hailman will win it. 69 yards, touchdown. And the Scarlet Flyers jump out to a 13-0 lead. A happy fans over there on the Neptune side. Take a look at Halvin right there, 32. Number four, Sterling for Matawan. Tried to run him down, but Halvin, excellent speed. Six points. A 69 yard touchdown run for the junior, Monty Halvin. And now it is Jamar Hoffman, number three, to attempt the extra point. And that kick is good. Hoffman is two of two on his extra point attempts. And the Scarlet Flyers lead 14-0 with six minutes, 57 seconds left in the second quarter. We're gonna go normal speed. Take a look from the end zone. Good hole up front. Hellman off to the races. And nobody's gonna catch him. 65, Darnell Manley gave him a nice block, Jim. Oh yeah, look at the blocking up front. Everybody has their man, does their assignment well. Hammond took him, looking for the hole, breaks to the outside, and again, with his speed, nobody will catch him. Turning and burning, all the way to the end zone. Hoffman kicks it off for Neptune. Sterling at the 12. Araz Sterling across the 20, spins out of the tackle. Looks for room and finds it all the way to the 42-yard line, a return of 30 yards. Let's go down now to Greg Capalco on the sidelines. It's tough to get a word in edgewise here on the sidelines with the pace of this ball game. One thing that we're surprised with is the, is the, the quickness of the running of the plays by Neptune. Coach Ambiel's had his players on both the dietary and, and strength workout, including lit weights on Sunday, and it sure paid off because his troops look fresh. Greg just talking doubly fast to make up for that <laughs> lack of time, but doing a great job on the sidelines. First down for the Huskies at their own 42. Here's Charlie Rogers. Oh, great pursuit by the Scarlet Flyers. Let's take one more look at that kickoff return by Eras Sterling. Rogers was actually moved up in the formation, hoping perhaps that Neptune would squib it again like they had done on the previous kickoffs. That time the Scarlet Flyers kicked it deep, but Sterling brought it back 30 yards. Second down and seven at the 45. Roke looking for Colleton, gets rid of it, and he short hopped it. Great coverage by number 22, Mike Neal, on Ed Colleton, number seven. Neal was in blanket coverage, and you'll see Roke really has nowhere to throw at you. Yeah, well, I'm surprised they're making him go against the grain. He's throwing across his body. 
It's a real tough throw, and that ball might not have even reached. But again, there's Neal, 22. As you said, Mark, great coverage. That'll bring up third down. Madawan with three first downs in the game, all on its previous drive, which ended with the missed field goal attempt of 25 yards. So the Scarlet Flyers up by two touchdowns with 5.51 left in the second quarter. And early on, you'd have to say that the Neptune defense, which came into the game giving up less than 100 yards per game, is winning the battle. Neal gets Roke, who flipped it ahead to Rogers. That'll go as a completed pass, but for no yardage, as Mike Neal, number 22, was blitzing the quarterback. And, and one thing, Jim, when you see Madawan forced into a passing game, you know things are not going the Huskies' way because that is not the game they want to play. Yeah, they're a rushing team, and Neal came off the corner. A great call by Coach Avonville with the blitz. Number 10, Spentley Turan is back deep for Neptune. Kevin Roberts is the punter for the Huskies. A high kick, Turan eludes the flying tackle, but then is stuck and brought down at the 28. Turan, good concentration. Didn't call for the fair catch. The Matawan defense has really got to come up big and hold Neptune. Two long plays, the difference in this game, a 45-yard punt return by Greg Laughlin and a 69-yard run by Monty Haleman. First down at the 28. Laughlin dropped the ball and it appeared that he was able to get back and fall on it for a loss of about three. That dude gets real good penetration. Excuse me, Madawan gets real good penetration. Yeah, it's 22, Shafana, the linebacker. Number 70, that's Bernstein, on the ball. Second and 13. Hailman is hit and brought down. Oh, again, Matawan's defense has got to come up big. Right now, they're doing the job. Third down. No gain on the last play, so it is third and 13. Line of scrimmage is the 26. Dennis Hubbard has come on to the backfield, and Sella has it on the keeper. Justin Sella spins forward. He picked up about nine yards, but he'll be short of the first down. Well, Madawan holds. Call timeout. Huskies have indeed called timeout with three minutes, 45 seconds left in the second quarter. Take a look at Sella on the roll. Yeah, this is Sella. He's going to keep it the whole way. He's trying to gain yardage. Schifano, 22. Ran him down. 14 zip is the lead with 345 left in the second quarter. Madawan called the timeout to have a chance to regroup before what should be a Neptune punt. I don't think the Scarlet Flyers will go on fourth and a long four deep in their own territory. And then Joe Martucci wanted his troops to have a little time to work with. John Amabile is now designing something for a fourth down play and is reminding his special teams unit, if that is the unit that comes on the field, to stay in their lanes and don't give up the big play here. Yeah. Just think about the assignments. Well, we have a chance. We'd like to thank Madawan Regional High School Athletic Director George Hart for all his help and being a great host to TV 34 today. Charlie Rogers is one of the deep backs, along with Raz Sterling. Ooh. Hoffman got it away. Shafano was putting on the heat. Sterling at the 35, and he steps out of bounds. Penalty flag is down. 
see the call. Madawan has 12 men on the field. Yep, just counted them up, and that is the second time today Madawan has had 12 players on the field, so a little bit of confusion down there, and that one is going to cost the Huskies. We're going to wait for the ball to be spotted, but I believe that Neptune will keep possession with 3.36 left in the second quarter. That gives us a chance to go back down to Greg Kapalko. One of the reasons Madawan has had such trouble moving ball on the ground may be a subtle defensive adjustment by head coach Adam Beal and defensive coordinator Carl Mayo. Both of their inside linebackers are lining up all, over five yards off the ball on every play. The guards can't get there to block, and they're getting to the ball quickly. That's why Madison's star back Charlie Roberts hasn't been able to get to the open field. Good job so far by the defensive crew of Neptune. And Greg uh, met Madawan uh, tailback Charlie Rogers having the trouble, but Greg Laughlin, number one of Neptune, having no trouble at all. It was a 15-yard penalty for the 12 men on the field. It moved the ball to the 49, and then Laughlin, with a gain of nine yards on the first down carry, sets up Neptune with second and one at the Huskies' 40. So a very costly penalty on that punt as Neptune keeps the ball and keeps the drive going. Here's Monty Hailman and he is brought down. Number 34, Kevin Roberts, the senior, making the tackle. Roberts and Hailman. Good hit, right at the line of scrimmage. Close enough to measure. Scarlet Flyers needed a yard and they'll bring on the chains. It's so tough for a coach to swallow that penalty. You know, it's the the dumb one, 12 men on the field, their defense in hell. They see the Andrew. first down call by the official. Six first downs in the game for the Scarlet Flyers. Three for the Matawan Huskies. So the ball resting inside the 40. Here's Greg Laughlin again. And Laughlin swarmed under. Williams, two, was there. I think Schifano, number 22, was as well. And Williams, number two, came up hard and fast. Really made a lick. Let's see. Schifano first Ooh. and then Williams Ooh. high. Second down. And seven. Here comes Hailman. Hailman turns the corner to the 30, the 25, and knocked out of bounds at the 23-yard line. There is a flag down, and it could be holding against the Scarlet Flyers. And the 72 Carlson for Neptune was trying to pin down his man. Could have been holding. Holding against Neptune. Let's see if we'll see it again. We'll watch the corner right when Hailman makes the turn. It's 75. Oh. Have to see exactly where it came, but it wipes out a nice run by Monty Hailman. And the ball will be spotted back at the 43-yard line and bring up second and 15. Right now, Neptune's eating up valuable time on the clock. Neptune one half, second down and 14. John Amabile would love to see his team punch in another score and take a three touchdown lead into the locker room. So he's going to have sell a pass on second down. Wide open is Hailman with plenty of room to run. Hailman all the way to the six yard line. A gain of 37 yards and a first down. The Hellman got behind the linebackers and Sella with that soft touch. Got it to him. Out of a wobbler, but hit Hellman right in stride. Big play for Neptune. Two Williams going up to the ball, trying to strip it. Baker and Williams on the stop. It is first and goal. 
timeout, Matawan with one minute, 46 seconds left in the second quarter, and Neptune has the ball first and goal at the four yard line. So it was uh, a 39 yard completion from Sella to Hailman, which sets up Neptune in terrific field position at the Huskies four, and we'll come back with more right after this. Whether you shop at Crazy Joe's Furniture in Bricktown or Crazy Joe's in Howell, every day's a sale day. If it's living room furniture, we have lots to choose from. And the price is always right at Crazy Joe's. Dining room furniture, we have a tremendous selection. Bring in lunch or dinner and try them out. Recliners and bedroom furniture, you rest easy when you buy from Crazy Joe's. So do all your furniture shopping at Crazy Joe's in Bricktown and Howell, where the price is always right because there's low overhead. The Neptune Scarlet Flyers are threatening to open up a three-touchdown lead here in the first half. Here's how the Scarlet Flyers got down to the four. A nice soft pass by Sella to Hellman. Hellman got behind the linebackers. Wide open. Good call. That was a 39-yard completion. And it makes it first and goal at the four. Here's Laughlin for the three. And you know why they want to give the Laughlin those big legs, those huge thighs. Turns those legs, tough kid to bring down. As he showed on the punt return that he brought back 45 yards for a touchdown. Laughlin looks like, looked like he was stacked up at one point, but he just broke free and brought it into the end zone. Diving closer was Hailman, but he did not get in. Well, this is this is the big series. I mean, the Manawan defense cannot let Neptune in the end zone. We're under a minute, 50 seconds left. Third and goal at the one. Sella on the sneak. Touchdown. Justin Sella on the one yard quarterback sneak gives Neptune a 20 to nothing lead. This Sella, 6'4, lays his big frame over the goal line, goes right over center 63, Ben Pierce. Pierce, the big kid. Has started for this team for a couple years. Coach Avonville has got to be excited. Fired up Neptune squad has come out in the first half and put 21 points on the board as Hoffman adds the PAT. Oh, look at the pancake by Pierce. Selig, it's in the end zone. Great play. One more time, normal speed. And Mark, that could be the backbreaker for Matawan. Down 21 at half. It's hard to figure the Huskies, Jim, when uh, you see a Matawan team really being handled by Neptune, 21 zip. And apparently the Neptune defense has just come out and had Rogers' number, but you've got to figure that Joe Martucci and his staff will go in at halftime and make some adjustments to try to free up Charlie Rogers in the second half, but right now it is all Neptune, 21-0. Rodgers had a kickoff return for a touchdown last week against Bridgewater. Hoffman has it teed up and is ready to go. The line drive, Sterling picks it up. Raz Sterling brings it back to the 35-yard line with 36 seconds left in the half. Well, possibly Matawan can go deep, not a lot of time. Might play conservative, just take a knee. As you said, go back in at half, regroup. Clock is running with 30 seconds left. Mike Neal and the rest of the 
Houston defense has been outstanding thus far. Broke to throw it. Looking long for Sterling. He could not get to it. Number four, Malik Williams with coverage on number four for Madawan. Araz Sterling. There are 11 seconds left in the half. Yeah, Williams stride for stride. Not going to get beat deep. Not now. Got to go back to that 12 men on the field penalty. Madawan had held Neptune. Right. Oof. Forced the punt, but had too many men on the field. Neptune kept the drive going with the 15-yard penalty and eventually scored on the 10th play of the drive on the one-yard run by Sella to make it 21-0. Roke lofts it for Rodgers. It is picked off, intercepted by number 20, Frank Smith. And Neptune has owned the first half. And again, they make Roke go to his left with that cast on his hands. Watch it here. He's got to throw against his body, across his body. He can't even hold the ball with that left hand. It's a tough throw, and he just lost it in the air, trying to go deep. This is Neptune with the interception. There's Smith. There are four seconds to go in the first half. There was a holding penalty against Madawan, which Neptune declined. The Scarlet Flyers have the ball at their own 44-yard line. Four seconds left in the half, and now the clock is running. One, and that'll do it. No play as the first half comes to an end. A half that has been dominated by the Neptune defense holding Madawan to only three first downs, forcing four punts, a missed field goal, and picking off a pass. But there's still a half of football to come, and this one is not over yet. As the teams go to the locker room, Neptune leads 21-0 trying to take its record to 5-0, and oh, but there's still time to come, and we'll come back with more action right after this. Analog brakes, dual airbags. Honey, look! This is great! And honey, we can handle the financing. Seriously, how do I look? Cute. Academy Honda is having a super fall clearance sale. All 94 models must go to make room for 95 inventory. At Academy Honda, you'll find super low prices and no down payment for qualified buyers. Did you remember the checkbook? <laughs> I told you Academy Honda has the best deals. What would I do without you? We've been coming here for 15 years. We love it. The pizza was absolutely delicious. Pete and Elders, my mother never made lasagna this good. Mm. Number one, great pizza. The best in the world. Eat an extra, extra large pizza by yourself. Get a free Pete and Elders t-shirt. Carmen's thing crust. At Pete and Elders, we take care of you. Mm. Now I raise 500. Hey, where's everybody going? They've gone to Jason's Furniture in Ocean Township, where you can select from over 100 rooms of furniture on display priced well below regular retail. So come to Jason's in Ocean Township, where you can buy today and have it in your home tonight. For the best furniture deals in town, go to Jason's. Welcome back to the High School Football Game of the Week on TV 34 at halftime. Neptune leads Madawan 21 nothing. A bit of a surprise, Jim, at halftime as Neptune coming up with three touchdowns in the first half and really, really stuffing the outstanding running back of Madawan, Charlie Rogers. Yeah, the number one defense in the shore really doing the job today on Rogers from Madawan. How about that number one oh though? Making 21 points in the first half. One of the big plays was really a terrific punt return for a touchdown by Greg Laughlin. If you just tuned in, watch this one. This one is one to remember. Kevin Roberts punts the ball for Madawan. This is the final play of the first quarter. Neptune's Greg Laughlin gathers it in near the Madawan 45. He starts upfield untouched for the first 10 or 15 yards, runs into a little traffic, 
Schifano, 22, has a chance to get him, but how about the balance by Laughlin? Stayed on his feet and then runs out of that tackle attempt by Kevin Roberts. Picked up a great block late from Spentley Turan and then took it into the end zone for the first Neptune touchdown, the 45-yard punt return. That was great, Jib. You know, we talked about Laughlin being untouched for the first 10 or 15 yards. Anybody can look good when there's no tacklers around him. But how about the way he came through the traffic? Yeah, he got a couple blocks up front, but he did it all on his own. And you take a look at Neptune right now. I mean, they're doing sit uh, handstands and sit-ups. and I mean, they're ready to go. Uh, Greg Capapa down on the sideline told us about what their conditioning is. And Neptune looks alive. They look crisp. Other side of the ball, Neptune, or Madawan, excuse me, a little flat. You know, they got to get back in this game. They're down by 21, uh, and they got to get their all-star uh, running back, Rodgers, into the game. The other Neptune touchdowns were scored by Monty Hailman on a 69-yard run and a one-yard run by Justin Sella. Jamar Hoffman has kicked three extra points, and that's where we are as the third quarter is about ready to begin. 21-0. In the maroon sweater, George Hart, the athletic director at Manawan Regional High School. And once again, our thanks to Mr. Hart for helping us set up and being a great host. This is the Bruce McCutcheon Memorial Field, the field name for the late Matawan athletic director, Bruce McCutcheon, a longtime supporter of high school athletics in the short conference. A great man in this field bears his name. Just a terrific afternoon. This entire facility has been redone over the last couple of years and looks in terrific condition. We are in a new press box today, and it's looking good. Looking real nice at Matawan. The Huskies should get the ball as the third quarter gets underway. You recall that Matawan had the choice in the first half, elected to defer. And so the Huskies will now get the ball back. And even though we talked about Neptune being in control 21-0, as you see a couple of the people up here in the press box, one or two plays could change this whole game around, Jim, with a kick return man like Charlie Rogers. If the Huskies could ever get the ball in his hands, and thus far Neptune's done a great job keeping it away from Rogers, but uh, he could electrify this crowd and put Madelon right back in it. Yeah, with his speed, and he's so explosive. He can score points. The thing that's killed Matawan is the penalties, the dumb penalties. Well, that Huskies barking, but so far, no bite for Matawan. But uh, with the three touchdown lead, we'll see what happens in the second half as Neptune trying to run its record to 5 0. Oh. Matawan coming into the game at 3 and 1, coming off the loss a week ago to Bridgewater Raritan in a non league game. Still 24 minutes of playing time in this one. Hoffman will be kicking off with Sterling and Williams. Actually. Sterling and Williams are deep. Rogers is up a couple of yards in the middle, trying to get his hands on the ball, but he won't. Williams at the 10, to the 15, the 20. Penalty flag down as Williams brings it back to the 35-yard line. A nice job by Marty Williams, but a penalty may bring that return back. We'll wait and see. Yeah, you can see how heads up Neptune is. They know where number one is at all times. They kick it deep. And Mark, as you said, Williams with a nice return. But it's coming back on the penalty. Clipping is the call against the Huskies. And instead of having the ball at the 35-yard line, it will be spotted at the 12. So when you talk about the impact of a penalty, the Coach Joe Martucci's club, that one has just cost the team 23 yards of field position. 5'11", Junior Darnell Roke needs to fire up his club as the third quarter gets underway. First and 10 Huskies at the 12. Here's Rodgers. Rodgers reverses his field and has room to run. Here's the big play we're talking about. Colleton with a block. Rodgers was finally brought down by Mike Neal. No, make it uh, Hailman 32, but not before he reached the 44-yard line. A gain of 32 yards for Charlie Rogers. Rogers going to try the right side. Sees that there's nothing there. Neptune over pursues. 
Number 30, Ingram had a shot, couldn't wrap up. Rogers reverses field, goes left, and makes a big play. Hailman, good speed, runs him down. Player down for Neptune is number 20, Frank Smith. He wasn't hit by anyone. We believe he's cramping up, and that's what he's being looked at right now. So Smith is up and will be helped off the field. That game by Rodgers brought the ball all the way out to the 45-yard line where the Huskies have it first and 10. So maybe that's the spark Madawan needed to get back into the ball game. That was by far the best play offensively for Madawan this afternoon. Yeah, the misdirection it wasn't called, but Rodgers, heads up player. Madawan's only real scoring opportunity in the first half came on a 25-yard field goal attempt by Jeff Moore that was no good. And other than that, the Huskies never really threatened. First down at the 45. Here's Rodgers. He barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be second and 10. 86 Smith, 72 Carlson, Pierce 63 up front, and Gamble 89. Hey, they're all over the ball getting penetration. They mark it as a loss of one, so make it second and 11. They gotta get uh, number one, Rodgers, to the outside, Madawan. I mean, that's where he can utilize his speed. Neptune really plugging the middle with tackles Pierce and Carlson. Great look right here. Quick flip, Sterling makes the reception around Sterling. Got inside Neptune territory before he's hit and driven back, but he'll come away with a gain of about five or six yards. Yeah, take a look at Sterling. Again, the quick pass to the flat. Go quick drop, get it out there. He's got number seven, Colton, in front, almost a pick play. Good team tackling by Neptune. Third down. And four after the seven-yard gain. Rope goes the other way. Incomplete intended for number eight, Rashawn Mallory. And that will bring up fourth and four. So the Huskies, who looked like they would have had the first down if Mallory had been able to hang on to the ball, they just needed four, will now be forced to punt on fourth down. Uh, you see Rashawn, Marshall. Tony Graham on the sidelines, another big game. <laughs> so less than the Madison Wall game. Kick by Roberts is not a very good one. And it will roll out of bounds at the Neptune 28. And that's where the Scarlet Flyers will have it. Oh, gonna see that Neptune offense come back on the field. The Neptune D holds them again. Coach Abbeville talking to his quarterback, number six, that's Sella, Justin Sella. Good size at 6'4", oh, yeah. 195, just a junior. First down at the 27, 9.52 left in the third quarter. Neptune leads 21-0. This is Hailman. Hailman with a first down. And more as he gains about 13 yards. Monty Hailman, who rushed for 69 yards against Long Branch a week ago, having a fine afternoon today as he picks up a first down at the 42, a gain of 15. Yeah, Neptune's having real good success turning the corner. There's number 52. That's Clark Pullen. Gets a block. Number three, Hoffman. Everybody's doing their job. Hammond gets up field. Even though Hoffman didn't hit anybody, he was able to screen Sterling off the play. Here's Dennis Hubbard. Hubbard reaches the 45. There's a flag down. Away from the away from the main action, there was a flag thrown. C22 to Shapano. He's upset. That's a linebacker for you. Shaved head. Got the goatee working. Two players were ejected from the game, and Shifano was one of them. It was uh, personal fouls 
on both teams. I'm not sure which Neptune player was thrown out. I think they said Pierce, the center. It may have been Pierce, 63. They were going at it behind the play. That's where the flag was thrown, and there was a little bit extra. And Pierce and Schifano, two very key players, have been tossed from this game and may well have to sit out the next game for their teams under state rules. I think if a player gets ejected from a football game in New Jersey, they may have to miss the next game. So that is a very big penalty and a very big decision on the part of the officials. Yeah, and both coaches are gonna get an explanation because these are two important parts for these, both of these teams. Maybe Greg Capaco can get us a, an explanation between plays, but whoa, you know, it's always terrible to see somebody get ejected. I mean, these guys just trying to go at it, you know, and hit people. Hey, the refs have got to keep it under control. You got to play the game. John Amabile on the Neptune sidelines. Not happy because his center has been ejected. You know, Mark, from an offensive standpoint, the center is one of the most important people out there. He works with the quarterback every day with the snaps. I mean, he can replace a linebacker. I mean, Schifano, he's one of their leading tacklers and a real leader. But when you got to bring in another lineman who hasn't played, you know, he's not used to it. That hurts. Looks like number 77, Joe Taylor, is now in its center for the Scarlet Flyers. On first down, Greg Laughlin. Hit and brought down by Marty Williams. What a stick by Williams. As the Huskies trying to climb back in this game, it was a five-yard pickup. It'll be second down, but now it's Marty Williams trying to fire up his club. About Williams, he's been hitting people all day. Lofton gets the ball. Watch Williams come in and really lay a crack. Oh. Here's Monty Hailman close to another first down. Gain of seven. That's first another down, Neptune first down. The Scarlet Flyers ninth first down of the afternoon, and this is their first drive in the third quarter. All day long, Jim, first Neptune has been playing yard at yard. A, a faster pace than you normally see from some offenses. Maybe the time will be coming soon when the Scarlet Flyers want to start taking a little more time. Asella gains about eight yards and draws another flag. Yeah, you're going to see a late hit from Madawan. They got him in the back. That's where that flag's coming from. The refs want to keep this game under control. Sella was down on his knees. You heard the whistle. And Madawan came in. I mean, people are still going after the quarterback. This is going to be a tough call versus Madawan. Personal foul is the call. It'll be a 15-yard penalty. And we've seen it all day. Nothing is going Madawan's way. Personal foul against Madawan. So that moves the ball all the way down to the Huskies' 24-yard line. And Neptune comes to the line of scrimmage with 8 minutes, 25 seconds left in the third quarter. And Madawan calls timeout. And maybe a good timeout right here for Joe Martucci as he, want to he wants to regroup the troops. One more look at this run by Sella. He go goes down to his knees. He gets stopped. from the troops. He got 31. The spear from Madawan. Hard to see the number. That's a tough call. Yeah, that's, Mark, that's Joe Martucci. Yeah, that's the coach's son, the sophomore, 31. But yeah, You can't tell if a quarterback that size is on his knees or if he's still on his feet. You know, he's just trying to play the game. So the Scarlet Flyers come back to the line of scrimmage. John Amabile with a career record of 173 wins, 122 losses, and 11 ties in several decades as a high school head coach. Here's Greg Laughlin. Laughlin pursued and finally ridden out of bounds by Baker, number six. Well, Neptune is really mixing it up, getting good 
production from Lofton, number one, 32 Hellman. And we're going to watch it again. There's number one Lofton. Gets, we get a block from 65 Manley. Turn the corner. On that play. Yeah, yeah, and Madawan's got to be careful. You know, he's out of bounds, clearly. they got to let up. You hear that whistle. That was a gain of nine. Second and one. The toss to Laughlin. Martucci hit him first, and that was great penetration by the sophomore, Joe Martucci. And then the rest of the Huskies came in to wrap up junior running back Greg Laughlin. Well, Martucci's trying to make up for the slack. Uh, that he comes in for Schifano, number 22. And he's trying to be a madman out there, but he's got to play within himself. And that play went nowhere. The Huskies are doing some talking out there, but uh, I don't know. Down 21 nothing. Just make the play. Here's yeah. another look. Going to come with the blitz. There's two Williams coming. Times it perfectly. Well, there's a hit on Sella. And all over Hellman gets a little help. Yeah, and give Hellman credit. Holds on to the ball. I don't even know how Sella was able to make oh. the handoff. Williams is the hitter. Fourth He's down. Again. The Scarlet Flyers will go from inside the 20. The pass is incomplete. And the Huskies have held on fourth down at the 19-yard line. Well, good play by Baker, number six. Free safety. Holds his ground. Gives help. There's two. Williams is going to come again. It's a blitz. Delayed blitz. Goes to the outside. Realizes it's a pass. He's got to get back in the coverage. It's 25. Zabrowski gets help from six. Baker. Good defensive stand. Number five is the quarterback for Madawan. Junior Darnell Roke. There's an injured player down for the Scarlet Flyers. I think it's Jamar Hoffman. So Roke brings the offense back to the sidelines. Greg Capalco is across the way with John Amabile Jr. on the Neptune side. And this one has been a Neptune afternoon thus far. Seven minutes, three seconds left in the third quarter. The Neptune offense ranked number one at the shore and number one defensively as the Scarlet Flyers try to improve their record to 5-0. Scarlet Flyers, if you want to look ahead, will host Monmouth Regional on October the 29th in another B North Division game. Jamar Hoffman being attended to. And Matawan will play at Long Branch on October the 29th. Later in the season, in a couple of weeks, we will have Neptune's game at Ocean. That game will be played November the 5th at Ocean Township High School. And we'll be there to see the Scarlet Flyers take on the Spartans. Plenty of action still to come in this high school football season. As things really picking up and the division race is taking shape. And for the win today, Neptune can put itself in great position to win the B North Division. The Scarlet Flyers already own victories over B North Division opponents Raritan, Long Branch, and Freehold Borough, and can take a big step with a win over Matawan. Their only division games remaining after today will be Monmouth Regional and Red Bank. That's a good Red Bank club, though, so by no means is this race over, even with a win for the Scarlet Flyers today. Here's Rogers. Weaving his way to the 24-yard line, a gain of five. Yeah, Roger just can't, can't get it going. Neptune has been all over him. Gets a nice gain of five yards. But the white jerseys are just really all over him. 25-yard line. Well, you got to think that just to make it respectable, Madawan would has to score on this drive or at least sustain this drive. Use some of the clock. Looks like number 88, Matt Stinson, has replaced Ben Pierce at defensive tackle for the Scarlet Flyers. Rogers to the outside. Brought down by Turan and Ingram. And Hailman, 32, was also there as Rogers reached the 30-yard line and or close to it, but looks to have the first down, and he does. 
Good strong running by Rogers. Get that first down. So at the end of that play, Rogers and Hellman. Rogers helped Hellman up from Neptune. Class act. Smith, Gamble, Carlson, and Stinson up front. The front four. Rope throws long for Sterling. Let him too much. Coverage by number six, Justin Sella. Yeah, Sella was all over him. Rope trying to air it out. Nothing home. Huskies facing second and ten at the 30. Big split, Dave, big split. Five minutes, 49 seconds left in the third quarter. Here's Kevin Roberts, and Roberts is knocked down by number 34, Dennis Hubbard. Hubbard, a sophomore inside linebacker, really got a good hit on Roberts. There's Dennis Hubbard. When you look at uh, some of the Neptune players in this ball game, you see a lot of juniors and sophomores. Hubbard a sophomore, Hailman a junior, Mike Neal a sophomore, Frank Smith a junior, Malik Williams a junior. We've called these guys' names all afternoon, Jim, and even though there's plenty of senior leadership on the Neptune squad, there also looks to be a lot a lot of uh, younger talent as well for Coach John Amabile. Yeah, when you get the younger guys to playing time, it pays off, and you can see the teams that can do that are the teams that win at the shore. I'm going to see, see Hubbard. Good stick. Street fight, street fight. Manawan head coach Joe Martucci Kevin! led the Kevin Huskies Becker. to a Central Jersey Group 3 championship a couple of years ago on this field against Neptune in a game that was decided in the overtime playoff where each team gets the ball at the 10-yard line for a series of downs and the team that scores more points wins. And if you saw that game on TV 34, you remember that Neptune had the ball first, scored a touchdown and an extra point Madawan scored a touchdown, was thinking about going for one, called a timeout. The Huskies decided to go for two and got into the end zone for the two-point conversion and the state sectional title. What a game that was. It was a treat to cover that game. Momentary stop for an equipment repair and now We're set on third down. Sterling to the top of the screen. Colleton, the wide receiver, on the near side. And there's movement by the tight end, Monroe. And that'll set the Huskies back five. Well, Stinson thinks it's on him. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see what the call is. Let's see. Saw the tight end Monroe take a step back. But the officials will make the decision. The flag will be waved no off. No Stinson did not hit anybody. He can get back in his stance, and obviously the tight end can move. And that's that's a no call. down. Roke under pressure and he'll be brought down. Number 11, Jason Anderson came in to make the play. Yeah, nice play by Anderson. Gets a sack. Just throws 34. Roberts from Madawan off. Makes the sack on Roke. was an eight-yard loss on that play. Bring out fourth down and long. Ball is all the way back to the 23-yard line, and now Roberts in to punt the ball away. His sixth punt of the afternoon. Some confusion there. Laughlin at the 44 to midfield. Laughlin brings it back to the Matawan 46-yard line. 
Gonna watch the sack again. He's number 11, Anderson. Fights off the block. It's all over Roke. Good play. Get one more look at it. Roke actually did not help his fullback. Came outside the block. That's allowed Anderson to get up field. On first down, Justin Sella on the quarterback keep. Brings it across the 45 and near the 42-yard line. This drive began for Neptune with four minutes, 36 seconds left in the third quarter. There's been no scoring in the third quarter. Watch the quarterback keep by Sella. You know, Neptune would like nothing better than to score a touchdown. Really close this game out. Hailman spinning and staying on his feet to the 28. Hailman on the carry. A gain of 14 yards for Monty Hailman and a Neptune first down. Well, what happens on this play is Hailman gets a, gets a handoff. Williams comes hard again. On the blitz, what that does, though, is create a natural seam or a hole because everybody else is stunning. All the other defensive linemen, Hellman gets positive yards. Here's Greg Laughlin. Laughlin springs to the outside, finally driven out of bounds by Shannon Baker. But Laughlin, who came into the game with over 600 yards rushing, has opened some eyes this afternoon. Rodgers gets all the ink, but Laughlin will get his share today. Yeah, Laughlin. Just reminds you of Earl Campbell. Power comes into the defender, keeps his legs driving. He's going to bring people out of bounds with him. Fantastic run. A gain of nine yards, second and one. Hailman rocked. He needed a yard for the first down, and we'll check the spot. Good one-two punch today for Coach John Amabile with Hailman and Laughlin in the backfield. And don't forget, Dennis Hubbard has done a nice job blocking first and has also picked up a couple of carries. It was a first down run on the last play, so yeah, Neptune has moved the ball to the Maniswan. Check it, the Matawan, 18. And the fifth play of the drive will be coming up with three minutes left in the third quarter. I get the feeling Laughlin is going to break another one. He's got the ball. Not this time, though. The Huskies had good penetration. Yeah, good penetration by Matawan. Sella had a little problem with the handoff. Mark, you had just commented on it. All three running backs for Neptune have done the job today, especially with Sean Clark, their leading Second point scorer, 11, out uh, you know, on defense, a middle linebacker, and a fullback. This is a team game. And the team from Neptune has come to play today. The toss to Hailman. He brings it to the 15. A gain of six. It'll be third and four. Right now, Neptune just wants to keep the clock rolling. We're down to two minutes left in the third quarter. Neptune with a three-touchdown lead. Yeah, it's methodical. Run right, run left. Quick pitch. Hellman banging. Laughlin banging. Hubbard getting good blocks up front for their line. It's an all-underclass backfield. Sella, a junior. Laughlin and Hellman juniors. And fullback Dennis Hubbard, a sophomore. Sella puts it up, lost it for Gamble. Touchdown! Nice catch by the senior tight end, Derek Gamble. A 15-yard touchdown completion. Well, I'll tell you, that's going to impress some coaches in the college ranks. Gamble had two TDs last week versus Long Branch. And again, Mark, you called it. What a nice catch. The fingertips. 6'6", 226. Great size for a tight end. They haven't gone to Gamble too much today. That may have been the first pass thrown his way. And Derek Gamble came down with a touchdown catch. The kick by Hoffman is good. 
Strong performance by place kicker Jamar Hoffman today. He's four of four. And Neptune leads 28-0. One more look at the touchdown pass. Yeah, let's check this out. Look at those hands from the big man. Sella gets good protection up front. Gonna go real slow. A nice touch on the pass. Oh, what concentration. Look at those hands. It's all Neptune today, Mark, I'll tell you. One minute, 31 seconds left in the third quarter. That was the first points in the third quarter. Little squibber picked up by Sterling. And he runs into the pile at the 31 yard line. You gotta give uh, Coach Amabile and his staff a lot of credit. They were prepared, they got their kids prepared for today's game. The execution on defense and offense, outstanding. Madawan has the ball first and 10 at the 31. John Amabile, the head coach, his assistants, Ted Beekman, Carl Mayo, Tom Walsh, Gerald O'Donnell, and Bob Amabile. Let's go down to Greg Capalco. I spent the better part of the third quarter on the Neptune sidelines, and I have to tell you, the intensity level over there is unbelievable. Uh, Coach Amabile and staff did a great job, and these players are fired up in every play. The last time they were at, the, at this field, they, they lost a tough one, and I tell you, they seem to want it all back today. Second down. The 35. Intensity, the name of the game, and the Scarlet Flyers have it today. Rope. Driven out of bounds. No flags. Took one of the Madawan coaches with him as well, I think. Well, let's take a look at it again. Rogue, he hasn't kept the ball all game, and he does this time and makes positive yardage. These guys are going after it on defense. Let's see if there's a late hit. And they're trying to let up now. It's momentum. With no call by the officials. I think Tony Graham's in there. He's trying to get the action. <laughs> Come on, ref. Let's get those chains across the field. Let's see the measurement just short. He's just short. Bring up third down and inches. So the Huskies, who haven't had anything go their way this afternoon. Well, this one's all about pride. Yep. Trying to salvage some of it right here on third and inches. Half a minute left in the third quarter. Give us to Williams, and Williams has the first down across the 45. Yeah. Good call, give to Williams, the up back. Just make sure you get that first down, hold on to the ball. Good look over there at the Neptune defense. Rope dropped the ball, it's loose. Rogers fell on it. It's a loss of five on what may be the final play of the third quarter. Rope wanted to run the option, but was wrapped up and could not get rid of the ball. It was knocked out of his hands. And Madawan will be facing a second down and 15 call when the fourth quarter gets underway. That was Herb Smith, 86, with the pressure on Rope. Rodgers fell on it, but the Huskies are up against it as we head for the fourth.
you need a trailer, heck, trailers is the one. If you need a good reason, we'll give you some. Moving can't be sorry. You want to have a trailer. A temporary office. You need a heck trailer. Race cars and motorcycles. For all you need to move. We've got the trailer that's right for you. If you need a trailer, we've got trailer know-how. We rent them and sell them to heck trailers now. Heck trailers for all your trailer needs. Beautiful blue skies over the Matawan Regional High School field, Bruce McCutcheon Field. But it hasn't been a beautiful day for the Huskies as they trail 28-0. In the first play of the fourth quarter, Charlie Rogers gains 10 yards to midfield. Timeout. And a long afternoon for Matawan fans and football supporters. There's a Neptune player down on the field. And I think it is Frank Smith, number 20. Trainer Glenn DePaulo has come on to tend to Frank Smith. Neptune with seven points in the first quarter, 14 in the second, and seven in the third. You want intensity? You got it from John Amabile. <laughs> yeah, you don't want Coach Amabile yelling at you, I'll tell you. I have friends that played for him over at Wall. When he was at Wall High School, and I'll tell you. Mr. Intensity, he gets you fired up for games. So Smith has helped off for the second time today, that same cramping problem. In the hamstring. Renovations <laughs> underway here at uh, Bruce McCutcheon Field at Matawan Regional High School. And it may be a Saturday afternoon, but these guys are busy. I thought they had off on the weekends. Guess no. not. Nope. No rest. Third and five. Rogers. Looks like he has the Matawan first down. Six yards. It seems that Matawan, whenever they get Rogers the ball quickly, he can get to the line of scrimmage. He makes positive yards. First down, Matawan. First Taking a look at the Matawan drives today. Six punts, one of which was returned for a touchdown. A missed field goal of 25 yards by Jeff Moore. And a pass that was intercepted by Neptune's Frank Smith. The Huskies looking long for Colleton, and the pass fades out of bounds, incomplete. Mike Neal, number 22, with the coverage on Ed Colleton. Yeah, Neal was all over him. Blanket coverage. Colleton, number seven, six four. He can go up and get the ball, but not when you're facing coverage, defensive coverage like that. Look at the fine facilities here at Matawan. Those trees, they're, they're changing. Football season. All foliage and football. Great afternoon, but not for the Huskies or their fans. As Neptune leads 28 zip. Scarlet Flyers trying to go to 5 0. On second down, there's a reverse. Sterling. Will gain nothing as Malik Williams, number four, made the stop. The quarterback, Darnell Roke, gave Sterling a block, but it was well behind the line of scrimmage, and Williams came up and made a nice play. It was a gain of barely a yard as you take another look. The person's going to fool nobody for Neptune. They don't over-pursue. Stay at home. You see Williams come up and make the tackle. The defensive play. Third and nine. And 44. Rogers to the outside, the 35 30, cuts back and gets to the 23. A 19 yard pickup for Charlie Rogers and Matawan first down. Yeah. Rogers finally gets some blocking up front. The line gets a good push. 
see how positive the results can be. The leading rusher in the short to the outside, turn and burn. He cut back behind the block from Ed Colleton and picked up another four or five yards at the end of that run, Jim. First down at the 24. 10 minutes to play. Roke under a rush, gets rid of it, and it falls incomplete in the end zone. Closest to it was Malik Williams of Neptune. Yeah, Mike Neal came off the corner, number 22 for Neptune. Got there as Roke threw the ball. You see him? The defensive secondaries played extremely well today for the Scarlet Flyers, Neal, Smith, Williams, Sella has been in there. Anderson has been in there. Rogers on the draw, met by Hailman, and stopped at the 22. <laughs> How about that hit by Hailman? <laughs> Inside linebacker. You see the nasty man, 86 Smith. Talking to defensive coordinator Carl Mayo before the game, he said, keep your eye on number 32. He might be ready to break out. Coach Mayo, I tip my hat to oh, you. Yeah. You had Monty Hellman's number today. The pitch to Rogers. Penalty flag thrown as Lou Carlson, number 72, makes the stop. I'll tell you, give Rogers a lot of credit because he is going to be sore tomorrow morning. Just get beaten up by that Neptune defense. Three or four guys on top of them every time they make a tackle. That's Carl Mayo in the red sweatpants. He is the defensive coordinator. Real proud of the job his defense has done in 1994. And I guess coaches kind of get a feeling before a game. But Carl Mayo said, I, I think Monty Hailman, the junior, is ready to break out. With Clark, the senior linebacker, out injured. And uh, Monty Hellman has certainly done a great job as well as the rest of the Neptune defenders today. The penalty against Matawan has moved the ball all the way back to the 37 yard line where the Huskies have a long third down call coming up. Nine minutes, 15 seconds left in the ball game. Neptune in control. The toss to Rogers. Rogers brought down after a short gain. During a week, I usually give the coaches in the games that we cover a call just to get the lineups and talk and see how things are going, Jim. And this week, talking to John Amabile, getting the lineup. I don't know if John Amabile had a feeling that his team was going to be up against it today, but he wasn't his usual uh, bubbly self. You know, a little, <laughs> little reserved when we spoke, and, and maybe he thought that the Huskies were going to come out and really test the Neptune defense, speaking about how coaches get a feeling for a game. Maybe that was his feeling, but it certainly hasn't worked out that way, and I'm, I'm sure that Neptune is going to use this as a big lift for the final half of the season. Roke's pass is up in the air a long time, but nobody near it. Number three, Jamar Hoffman, was closest to it for the Scarlet Flyers. So it's, it's funny, I guess, during a week, coaches look at a lot of film. They look at a guy like Charlie Rogers and uh, the other players on the team they're going to face and maybe think that their squad doesn't have the matchups. But didn't work out that way today, and Neptune has been in control. Ed Colleton, the intended receiver, fell down on that play. That's why the pass was overthrown. And let's go down to Greg Capalco. Coach John Ambiel's won a lot of games in a lot of places, but he's about eight minutes and 28 seconds from winning, and Matawan for the first time. His coaches are still a little nervous until that last touchdown, but it looks like they're going to get one for him today. And that is true. We have seen a couple of tough Neptune losses here at Matawan over the years but John Amabile and the rest of the Neptune staff can be proud of the effort this afternoon Neptune has played extremely well they're going to be celebrating tonight as uh, Greg had mentioned about just under eight minutes to go steady game from the quarterback Justin Sella Jim flag down Hellman Gains two. 
nothing spectacular from the quarterback, Justin Sella, but very steady play. I think a lot of times in high school football, that's what you look for in a quarterback. It's great if you can have the guy that makes the spectacular plays like we, we've seen in the past with a quarterback like Ed Conte at Ocean, but it's also good to have a quarterback who just can get the ball to the, to the people who need to have it, and certainly that's what Sella's done today, putting it in the hands of Laughlin and Hailman. Yeah, Sella, he's only a junior. He is going to really get a lot of game experience this year and next year hopefully just improve on that big time leader for neptune clock is running with seven minutes and 45 seconds to play quarterback key for sella carries it to the 46 yard line a gain of 11. Next week on TV 34, one of the games we'll have for you is Jackson at Manalapan. A couple of teams we have not seen yet. Jackson under its new head coach, Chris Barnes, the former Middletown North standout. Chris Barnes now coaching the Jackson Jaguars, and they'll be going up against the Manalapan Braves. Always a tough game. And then... As well, next week we'll have the Marlboro Mustangs taking on the Red Bank Bucks in what should be a very entertaining interdivisional matchup. Marlboro from the A North Division, Red Bank from B North. Halman has the first down at the 45. Of course, we mentioned today that this was a big short conference B North Division game, and that's not the way it's been in years past when Neptune was in the A North Division and would come or uh, come to meet Madawan. It was a big non-divisional clash but Neptune has been moved down to the B North division or not moved down but realigned and uh, now this one of course takes on added significance for these two clubs this one counts Sella on the quarterback keep to the Manawan 49 this one does count in terms of the divisional standings and Neptune will take a big step towards possibly winning a division championship Colors on the trees, huh, Mark? Terrific autumn afternoon. We haven't hit that real cold snap yet, but we will. Yeah, it's coming. Here's Greg Laughlin. 45. Neptune just wants to keep the running game going. Six minutes to play. Yeah, keep that clock moving. Madawan really hasn't done anything all game to stop it. Old Glory blowing in the wind. A lot of fans coming out to watch high school football this year. Big crowd on hand today at Manawan Regional High School. Flags before the snap. Of course, as you're searching around your dial with your handy clicker, you may not find too much choice in terms of sports on TV these days, and you're glad to have, uh, you're glad to be able to watch these high school games. Of course, the Major League Baseball strike wiped out a big portion of the season, as well as the postseason, and no NHL action, and a lot of people turn into whatever choices they can. Hey, this is for fun. High school football certainly good entertainment to watch. Come out and see a game in person if you get the chance. It's fun. Sella on the QB keep. Sella on the keeper. <laughs> How about Abbeville? Hoping the ref's out late hit. Trying to protect his quarterback. Sella, who got dragged out of bounds. you got to protect your quarterback. And we're we're going to watch Coach Abbeville come into it on the late hit. <laughs> Sportsmanlike conduct. Again. Man, he's fired up. We've still got about five minutes to go. Take a look at 
Aaron took Rodgers. Place on the -yard line. Had a tough game. -yard penalty really never got started. First and ten for the Scarlet Flyers. Got an outstanding running back. Great speed. Neptune had speed of its own on defense. Was able to cut off the corner for a great part of this game. The penalty moves the ball all the way to the Matawan 25-yard line. That's Hailman in the 20. Monty Hailman with a 69-yard touchdown run in the second quarter. That made the score 14-0. That followed the first Neptune touchdown, the 45-yard punt return by Greg Laughlin. Justin Sella has scored on a one-yard run and thrown a 15-yard scoring pass to Derek Gamble to account for the four touchdowns for the Scarlet Flyers. Here's Laughlin, big hole up the middle, through a tackle by Baker, and still going all the way to the four-yard line. It will be first and goal. Hey, you cannot arm tackle out there. These guys are going for it. Laughlin, a lot of power. Madawan's arm tackling. Hey, he's gonna score a touchdown if you don't hit him. You gotta hit and wrap up. Look at that. Takes on the block, the hits, and the defenders. 63. Ferguson, the lineman, finally came back to run it down at the five, where it's first and goal. 420 left in the ball game. Sella on the keep. We'll get into the end zone. There was a hole that closed up, but then Sella found some room and scores from the five. If I'm not mistaken, all on the ground. A well executed drive by Neptune. The second touchdown run for Justin Sella this afternoon. Number three, Jamar Hoffman will attempt the extra point. He has made four in a row. Turan is the holder. And that one is good. Hoffman five of five on extra points today. As Neptune clicking on offense, defense, and special teams. 35 nothing the score. Four minutes, 12 seconds left in the game. Well, maybe Madawan, four minutes to go, can salvage a little pride and get a score, but it's been a tough road all day. Take a look at Sella going in for the touchdown again. This drive kept on the ground the whole way. Perfect execution. Fans can cheer their team. The Scarlet Flyers will improve to five and oh. Madawan will be three and two when this one is over. And Neptune will be undefeated and in first place in the short conference B North Division. Hoffman's kick is taken by Sterling on the run at the 15. Harass Sterling. Brings it back to the 40-yard line before he's stopped there by the Scarlet Flyers. Mike Neal, number 22, is in on the stop with Laughlin. Well, Sterling gives Madawan decent field position. Let's see what they can do with it. First down for the Huskies. The one thing Neptune does have to be concerned with this season, Jim, and I think it's Depth, the fact that there's plenty of good starting talent for the Scarlet Flyers, but we've seen a lot of players on both sides of the ball today. Although Sean Clark, their fine fullback and linebacker, was injured a week ago, they were able to overcome that, but when injuries start to become a problem, you hope they don't come in bunches. As a coach, you don't like to see it from a personal standpoint as well as what it does to the team. And yeah. I'm not sure what kind of depth this Neptune squad has, but John Amabile and his squad are hoping that will not have to become a factor as the 
final weeks of the season unfold. And they really played well as a team on both sides of the ball. First and 15 after the penalty against Madawan. Fumbled. Roke picked it up. No gain on the play. Hey, when it rains, it pours for Madawan. Just having all kinds of problems out there. Let's take a look at Second Neptune's down. upcoming schedule and see what the Flyers have left. They will go, as we said, to 5-0 and today with the win at Madawan. October 29th, the Scarlet Flyers will host Monmouth Regional. Then we will pick up Neptune again on November the 5th when the Scarlet Flyers play at Ocean Township High School. Always a big game. And then November the 12th, the regular season Neptune at Red Bank, which should be an entertaining matchup. Big Herb Smith, number 86, got his hand on that pass the second time today that Smith, the defensive end, has knocked down a pass. Yeah, he's a good defensive player. He gets up in the air, good athleticism. 6'3", 210-pound senior. Smith has made his presence felt at defensive end. And just reiterate, nasty man in the back of the helmet. And he plays his keys real well. Stays at home. Good job today on defense. Roke gets rid of the ball off the hand of the intended receiver, number three, Jeff Moore. How about that secondary? We mentioned it, but they've done an outstanding job for Neptune. Good coverage back there. A lot of people may have been asking themselves how Neptune was going to overcome the loss of their outstanding running back of the last few years, Scott Harley. And those questions appear to have been answered this year with Laughlin and Hailman in the backfield as Roberts gets set to kick it away. Life goes on in high school football. The great players come and go, and it's always a rebuilding effort. But the Scarlet Flyers have just reloaded in 1994, and now they're just two and a half minutes away from a 5-0 start. No more commenting on uh, Neptune's schedule. They got to play uh, Barry Sullivan's team up at Red Bank. They didn't make the states last year because of the power points. That's going to be another huge game to end the season for Neptune. And that could certainly have a bearing on the B North Division winner. So the Scarlet Flyers come to the line. Clock is running with 2.20 to play. And here's Greg Laughlin. Starters from both sides still in the ball game, playing the final two minutes. Yeah, a game of this magnitude coming in. Going for first place in the B North. These guys want to be here to the final whistle. 